Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the elder apostle Tahar. GMS declaring the end. The title of the video as you see Revelation 20 and 4. Donald Trump and guillotines. Okay. And he did this lesson in response um, to the uh, beloved brother Yashalam. GMS Watchman, as you can see the video he's responding to reality Trump says he will bring back guillotines to behead if reelected as president so subscribe subscribe to that page as well now this is an article came out February the 15th which is today and ultimately um, this is the sentiment which this is not the first time um, in the last couple of years that this has come out okay Trump reportedly wants to bring back firing squad, guillotine, and mass executions. Okay, the firing squad is they can line you up and just, you know, use their guns and, you know, whatever, you know, methods they have to just take out, a, a, you know, a group of people. The guillotine is where you get your head cut off. Okay, and mass ex, uh, executions is they can take members of particular groups and make them examples, all right, by executing them openly. And these are the drastic measures that are to come. Now, we know in the book of Revelation, the uh, 13th chapter, it talks about as Babylon the Great, you know, rose up and brought back that energy of Rome, they would have two horns like a lamb, and they would speak as a dragon. And when you look up that word in the Greek, dragon is Draco, which we always go into it. Draco was a Athenian lawgiver, which goes back to Athens, Greece. Okay, which that energy of the Greco-Roman Empire is all the way back here today. Rome was where they established themselves as, you know, a dominant force, but the Greeks or a force to be reckoned with as well. Okay. That's why it was called the Greco-Roman Empire. So you see remnants of the Greek culture as well here in this beast system as well. Uh, that's why it says in the book of uh, Revelation 13, the first head of this beast was the leopard, the Greeks. And when you go to Draco, he was an Athenian lawgiver that was known for his harsh method of getting things done harsh laws being passed severe laws being passed and you even hear that term today draconian laws well, we haven't seen anything yet as things are about to get absolutely crazy now if trump himself you know if we do make it to 2024 all right and trump actually does run for president that in itself is going to bring all manner of back and forth, civil unrest. And by that time, the earth is going to be absolutely crazy anyway. We can already see pretty much all over the world. <laughs> it's nothing but chaos. Here in Babylon the Great, you see all of these various different uh, train derailments. Okay. And all of these different crashes where chemicals are being burned into the atmosphere into the water system okay order out of chaos okay and the order that they want to bring is going to take uh, uh you know absolute pain being brought to the people okay and the thing about the guillotine which what is a guillotine used for let's look it up real quick if you didn't know, because it's good to look things up. The guillotine is a device consisting of a heavy blade held down aloft 
between upright guides and dropped to behead a person condemned to die. Now, in ancient Rome, they did this. Okay, how much more in the revival of it? And they always talk about how they want to bring out and bring back those ancient methods of torture. All right. An instrument such as a paper cutter, similar in action to a guillotine. Okay. And if you look up the images of it. Okay, you can see it. The head goes here. All right, and the blade drops. Okay, and you see the blood around um, this. Now, when you go back, when you go to ancient Rome, let's look it up real quick. And this is the reality of um, <laughs> what we are a part of and what's coming down the pipe. Okay, in Rome, they would behead people. In Rome, they beheaded particular of the disciples Okay, the apostles, some of them were beheaded. Some were crucified. Hanging upside down, you had all methods of torture, which, you know, when you get into it, those ancient torture methods are going to be brought back. Okay, as the devil was going to have free reign. Okay, to do what he does. Okay, and you can just look up. Ancient Rome, the guillotine, ancient torture methods, which the scriptures talks about that which is then is now. All right. The guillotine instrument for inflicting capital punishment by decapitation. Introduced into France in 1792, which France is a part of the beast system. All right. The device consists of two upright posts and that's it, you know. You can look more into it. Now, when you get Revelation, the 20th chapter in the fourth verse, um, John, a revelator, as he saw many visions dealing with the mark of the beast, he saw it being administered. He saw the men of the Lord with a harsh warning against it. He saw the men of the Lord and the elect, you know, being rescued and delivered, receiving victory over the beast, his image and his mark. He saw those who took the mark okay receive an, a, a, a grievous sore which cancer means a spreading sore okay and all of that radiation tied to these devices okay and it's been studied the apostles and elders brought it out that they found out that these uh haragmas okay could bring cancer they found out that it, even in pets, it was bringing cancer. It was making them sick. Human beings as well. There was a study on it. But of course, we know the devil is going to suppress it. Now, when you look up this word mark, we always show you that it is a charagma. The word for mark, let's just get it real quick as we always go into, okay, is charagma. All right. The root word is karax. All right. Now. It says a stamp, an imprinted mark. Of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the anti Messiah, because you will have to take an oath. To be entered into the new world order, a bad a mark branded upon horses, and we know what that was for. OK, to mark ownership to track. OK, a thing carved, sculpture, graven work and of adulterous image. OK, a graven mark, a etching, something that is physical. And you still have Israelite camps sticking to those same breakdowns. Now, here in Acts 17 and 29. Paul says this for as much then as we are the offspring of the most high, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven <laughs> or graven. That word graven is charagma by art and man's device. So this word is dealing with something physical. 
This is what John saw being issued forth as a means, all right, to change the system of buying and selling. And as we look out into the earth, we clearly see that they have many, many, many plans with this, okay? As we'll get into a few uh, articles we have, we know at the World Economic Forum, this is something they are um, talking about heavily, okay? We'll even show you, all right, that particular companies in Babylon the Great are preparing and requiring their employees to be microchipped, okay? So the vision that John the Revelator saw is coming to pass. At the end, it shall speak. Now, when you read Revelation 20 and 4, John the Revelator sees what? And I saw thrones, all right, and they set upon them and judgment was given unto them. Okay, this is your Hawashai and, okay, the 144,000 at the end of the day with the 12 disciples at the head of that. They were told, when I come and establish my kingdom, ye shall sit on thrones, okay, and ultimately judge the 12 tribes of Israel, set things in order. And they will be at the forefront of establishing judgment. When you read Revelation 2 and 6 and 26, so like your 2 and 26, it says what? You that overcome and keep in my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule over them with a rod of iron, even as I have received of my father. So we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai and rulership. OK, and the remnant are going to be established and the order is the 144,000. The 12 will be at the head of that. Okay, the head disciple, King David, will take his place. Okay, and after the 144,000, you have a large multitude of men, women, and children that are going to be delivered. Okay, so the thrones that, that, that John the Revelator saw in this vision are the thrones of rulership. You see? In the kingdom of heaven under Yahweh Shai. As Yahweh Shai said, Let's get that in Luke, the 22nd chapter. Real quick, Luke 22. And 28, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father have appointed unto me, that ye may eat. And drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, setting things in order. OK. And then John says, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Those are the ones that are going to continue with him, even in his temptation. Temptations are coming down the pipe. And this is why we try to push a serious mindset onto you Israelites about the realities of what you're a part of. And what's coming down the pipe. So those. Okay. He saw the souls of them that were beheaded. For the witness of Yahweh Shai. We're testifying. And witnessing of Yahweh Shai. Right now. Okay. For the word of the most high. You see. So for the witness of Yahweh Shai. And for the word of the most high. Which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his charagma upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah a thousand years. That's the first dominion. It's not like after the a thousand year period, the heathen are going to rule again. No. We know once this kingdom is established, it's forever and ever and ever. But the first a thousand years, okay, are ultimately speaking of um, Yahweh Shai. And that governing body literally establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth, going throughout the earth, taking down and enslaving these heathen, pulling them out of those bunkers. OK. And ultimately, as it took, you know, um, seven one thousand year periods to complete, you know, uh, creation, when you read the book of uh, Genesis, the first chapter. OK, Yahweh Shai, those very same, you know, uh, spirits are going to be on earth and new bodies. And it's going to take a thousand years 
all right, to reestablish paradise. So the Lord is just not going to click his hand and everything turns back perfect on earth. No, he's going to allow Yahweh Shai, all right, and those first fruit spirits that were with him from the beginning, okay, to set up order on earth. And that's going to be the first 1,000 year period. The book of Micah, the fourth chapter in the eighth verse, I believe, calls it the first dominion. Okay. Now, in this chapter, John the Revelator sees, okay, men who were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High. Okay. So, what's written in this article, okay, even if it's not Donald Trump that brings back these methods, it's going to come to pass. Okay. Now, he set, you know, to um, run for president in 2024, okay, which we hope that this is the year we get out of here, okay, but we can very well be here in 2024, and ultimately all hell at that time will be then broke loose. Things will be significantly different, probably won't be on the highways and the byways at some point, by the end of this year or sometime next year, who knows what the Lord is going to do. All right. We don't know the exact day, the exact year. We were just sent here to do a job, but the Lord has given us the signs to let us know that we're clearly in end time prophecy. We see the earthquakes, the uproars, and people can say, well, that's always been, well, it's not been like this. Okay. All of these uh, uh, spills where chemicals are just being put into the atmosphere purposely. We see a clear order out of chaos scenario. Now, when you read this article, it says former President Donald Trump has been discussing the return of firing squads. OK, where they can take a group of individuals and just line them up and fire them, just, just, just put put them to death with the sword, the gun and guillotines. OK, and whether to uh, uh, to use them as a part of of his ad campaign for a potential run at the presidency, according to a published report. You see? <laughs> oh, man. Now, imagine, you know, Trump popping up, you know, running for president, and his ad is, you know, bringing guillotines to cut people's heads. People will lose their mind. All right, but with the right propaganda, okay, the fear of domestic terrorism, OK, uh, you know, the, the talking point of establishing a new world and get rid of people with particular ideologies and mindsets. These things can be well accepted. And many, many things are coming down the pipe. Again, the scriptures tell you the devil is going to what move with great raft because he know what they have but a short time. And they're going to tie this to Trump. But this is what the powers that be want to do. What did Claw Swab say? We need a meaner world. We need more force. See? And the things that are happening are going to justify them locking down particular parts all right, of particular uh, states and cities and doing what they do best. And they got all manner of technology. They all got all kind of weaponry ready to use on the people. You have foreign troops over here. But anyway, as the Apostle Tahar discussed in his video, okay, this is biblical. The brothers from Baton Rouge, um, GMS Baton Rouge, they did a video on it, man, and it was it was a beautiful video. I shared it. So the guillotine is coming. Okay? That straight gate is upon us. And again, what did Yahweh Shai say? You have to continue with him in his temptations. He went all the way to the cross. And certain of us who are preaching his word and have a, a strong stance against all that's happening, not worshiping the, the, the beast, neither his image, preaching against his mark, not taking it, because you're going to be given a choice. That's why it's called the hour of temptation. You see? Some of us, are going to be beheaded. John the Revelator saw it in a vision. 
So for this to come out <laughs> at this time, which this has been pretty much in and out of the you know, news reports for the last three years, okay, this is this this makes sense. This is coming. Rolling Stone, uh, citing three anonymous sources, reports Trump has on more than one occasion asked his aides about firing squads. Two of the sources said Trump has had discussions about uh, has had discussions about from bringing back group extinctions and the use of a guillotine. So you had Biden. And his administration come and bring, okay, back Sodom and Egypt. Okay, that fulfilled that because clearly everybody on his cabinet is either a, a flip flopper, <laughs> T R A N Z, uh, a, a weirdo, or a, a part of the alphabet community in some shape, form, or fashion. And that ideology is being spread, it's being pushed upon the children. So that did that, and that's going to justify the fire. Now this guy, you know, or whatever the devil does, it may not even be Trump. They may suspend elections. We don't know what's going to happen, but what's going to come at that point is brute force. As a matter of fact, let's get the book of Second Edris chapter 16. In 69, and you have all of these Israelite groups, all right, going around, pushing the notion that you could take the haragma, you could take a chip and be forgiven. So when things get tough and that hour of temptation comes, if your leaders have been telling you you'll be okay, there's nothing to worry about, you can bow the knee to the image of Baal, the Lord won't care, or you can repent. When they're put in a situation where they're going to have to take this or they're going to have to choose, okay, what are they going to do? They're going to uh, take what they think is the easy route out. You see? And this is why we constantly prepare your minds for the reality of what you're a part of. Second Edges, the seventh chapter. Okay? The, 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 the kingdom is set in a very wide and beautiful place and full of good things, but how can you get to it Unless you pass the narrow. And we all have to be purified by that fire. And the beauty of it is that it's already written from the foundation of the earth. That the elect will get the victory. So it's not by our own human, you know, uh, efforts. It's, it's, it's by the spirit. And this is why the elect have been raised up the remnant in these latter days to get that victory. But it comes with a very, 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 very. <laughs> hardcore trying and many israelites have tried to hide the true narrative of what what was getting ready to happen and what's happening they push to you this folly filled loving happy you know uh, have a good time way of life and then when we come and rebuke it we're called haters well we're coming into a time where a lot of israelites are starting to see like damn these these the the, the gms was right but here it goes. It says, Second Edges 16 and 69, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. So you're going to have many Israelites that consent to Esau. Okay? You saw an example of that with that taco sauce, with that uh, 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 Capri Sun that many were forced to drink. You had Israelite leaders Say, go ahead and take it. You'd be stupid not to take it. ISUPK. Okay, and they still haven't came back and said anything. They left you Israelites out there to dry. You'd be stupid not to take a, 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 a juice. That's what General Johanna said. No cowards. And then Bishop Nate. Okay, what did he tell his congregation? Okay. To go ahead and take it. And then after he got sick and 20 members of their congregation, you know, went back to the spirit world, 20 plus members, he, he changed his tune and they start saying not to take it. Y'all are going to have to pay for that. Now, it's good that y'all did finally come out and said not to. But 
what was up with you even telling Jake to do that? Then y'all were boasting well, yeah, everywhere. We, will we travel to Africa? Will we go to all these places? We we got to have the juice. We got to take these V's. Boasting, laughing. Making up this narrative that we're saying that the, the juice is the MOTB. Then all of a sudden, after Bishop Nate fell sick. All right, the uh, the narrative changed. Now, we don't know if he took it. But he was very, very sick. Only the Lord knows. Okay, but we do know y'all told y'all members that it was okay to go do that. And look at the derision that people are in, okay, <laughs> who took it. Everybody's com complaining about it. I hear the conversations all the time now. Oh, ever since I took my knee, my eye won't stop leaking. My bowels are messed up. I hear it all the time. I don't say nothing. Okay? Because you got to be wise with your tongue in these times. But <laughs> the men of the Lord warned you. And the Lord even put the spirit on particular doctors and others to come out and, 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 and tell y'all the truth about that. You see, so they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and, and reproach and trodden underfoot for there shall be in every place. And in this next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like mad men sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. OK. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So you, you got. All these canned goods stocked up. Okay. Or whatever you got. It's going to be a great insurrection. It's going to be like a, a, a horror film. But at that same time, then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as gold in the fire. See, we have to go through that fire. Okay. What did uh, John the Baptist say of Yahweh Shai? OK, he shall baptize you with all right, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit and with fire. And we've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you know, the 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 Rahakwadash getting this word. Now we have to go through the purifying by fire. As we uh, are preaching this word in a system that is completely anti Messiah, the revival of Rome. Hear ye, my beloved, the house of David, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. And you have many Israelites that are going to doubt in that day. Because the haragma is coming. It is already here. Okay? So, this article, although, you know, Trump can say, well, I didn't say that. This is a reality. They're not putting this out there for no reason. Okay, it's prophecy. We just read it. We read about the beheadings. We read about the great insurrection. We, we know about Jacob's trouble. Okay, so if you were, 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 were faced okay, with, you know, taking the MOTB or getting beheaded, what line would you be in? Many Israelites would be in the MOTB line with fringes on. Now, I thought the fringes were supposed to uh, uh, be something you look at to know not to sin. Yet you had Jake in the juice line to go get that juice, rolling up their sleeve to get that juice, drink that Capri Sun with fringes on. This is the type of confusion that's being pushed here in Israel. And brothers just sent me screenshots of Chief Ephraim being asked about the MOTB. He said it's a philosophy and a buying and selling aspect is dealing with how uh, uh, sanctions. He gave an example of, uh, you know, Russia not being able to buy and sell with NATO or, you know, the, 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 the uh, America. 
So first it's a philosophy, then you give a carnal example, which a sanction, all right, keeps you from buying and selling and trading and being able to, uh, you know, push oil and all of these in these different, you know, markets and nations. The MOTB is so that you can buy and sell. So the ideology doesn't match up. And why are you guys going so hard to disassociate the microchip with the breakdown of what John the Revelator saw in Revelation, the 13th chapter? Clearly, it's a physical thing he saw being administered. You see, and when y'all hear about the Haragma, y'all would rather die with the lie than to say Great Millstone was right. Y'all know damn well what y'all saying ain't making sense. All right, but just to, to, to separate yourselves from Great Millstone, you're just going to keep with that, with that stupid breakdown. And when is the Watchman for Israel going to uh, explain the buying and selling aspect? We still ain't got that breakdown. It, it all of a sudden changed to prostitutes and white women and rape. Anyway, going back here. It says two of the sources said Trump has had discussions about bringing back group extinctions or executions and the use of a guillotine. The third source said Trump has considered promoting those ideas in an ad campaign, which would involve airing footage from the executions, which that's a bit bizarre. But we know damn well Esau's bizarre. Remember, the beast <laughs> Is what? Let's look up the, the 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 word for beast. Let's see here. As a matter of fact, we'll do it here. The beast. What does beast mean? Because Esau has done this and worse. <laughs> The word beast in the Greek is therion. I'll just get to the point metaphorically. A brutal, bestial, savage, ferocious. Let's look up the word ferocious. Look, savage. <laughs> and that's pretty much tied to Esau. See? Come on now. Ferocious. Ferocious. So a brutal bestial savage man okay he is the final of the uh beast that daniel saw in daniel the seventh chapter that's to rule esau's the end of the world savagely fierce cruel or violent fierce savage predator untamed so to hear this you'd be like man that's a bit far-fetched but y'all forgot who this devil was like like elder Ariala brings out y'all forgot how crazy this devil was because of these suits he shaved the hair off his back you know he the lord has put him in a position you know he put the term white on himself so people really you know oh my god he's a serpent y'all y'all think that he's really just you know playing with y'all but it, what, what what did claw swab say we need an angrier world OK. And the reason that they were beheaded is because they were speaking against this Haragma. Now, I want to go here real quick. All right. To bring out a few articles. Um, this is from the Sun micro management outrage sparked over companies requiring employees to be microchipped with official calling to make it a felony. So just as you had particular, uh, you know, states, you know, bucking up against the uh, juice mandates, well, you're going to have the same thing here, but with the right, you know, uh, uh, devastation taking place in the earth, okay, it's going to be justified. This is what they've planned, what they're, what they're talking about doing, and this is what they've been planning on doing. And this is what they're going to do. It's coming. See? 
some companies are said to have been controversially microchipping their U.S. employees. The practice could soon become a felony in Alabama, though as an anti-microchipping bill is being uh, introduced by three state Democrats. So, boom. <laughs> the, 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 the fact that we see that, you know, their particular states bucking up against it lets you know that these things are being talked about and put on the books. Again, the scriptures say, woe to him that decree unrighteous decrees, okay, and, 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 and grievousness which they have prescribed. And they're talking about it's not mandatory right now, it's optional. Bill aims to make it illegal for companies to require their employees to have microchips. Why? Why? Why are they having it? Why is this bill even in place? And you, you mean to tell me Israelites don't have jobs in Babylon the Great or across the world? You mean to tell me it's not a possibility Israelites can be faced with this technology in the very near future? These microchips are usually inserted into human hands. Most people are going to take it in the hand. Okay, the brain for now, it seems as though it's dealing with, you know, uh, overcoming, you know, blindness, sicknesses, neurological issues and so forth. But that's going to be an option. It says they can act as passes to open doors, allow you to log into computers, even let you buy things from vending machines. Okay, the practice is said to improve security, peace and safety and make it harder for criminals to hack into private data. And the main criminals are the, the, the powers that be. Okay. This is in a Wisconsin based market chipped 100 employees in 2017. Several companies in Sweden are also said to have the uh, chip staff Democratic representatives. Okay. Uh, are introducing the anti bill in Alabama. So they're like, y'all ain't bringing that here. Okay. <laughs> you see what happened to Turkey when they said they don't agree. By the end of it, all will be on board. Okay. But the Lord got these devils divided. Now I wanted to play this particular, uh, let me see this video here. Give me one second. One second. Alabama Democrats want to ban employers from forcing workers to be haragmut. Okay. Let's see if we can get this to play. Give me one second here. The bill would prohibit state agencies, private businesses, insurance holders, bells bombing for requiring the haragma. the U.S. to offer microchip implants for its employees, the first company to do that. The rice size chips seen here are implanted in the hand underneath the skin between the thumb and forefinger. It lets workers swipe and buy food, open security doors, log into computers without using cards or passwords. Joining me now, three square... Now, who do they got up there? Who do they got up there as the example? Jake. I don't know if this is a stud, because this is how studs look from behind. Or this could be a, a, a actual male. You know, we don't know, but it's Jake. Why Jake? <laughs> anyway, let's keep listening. Our market CEO, he is Todd Westby. Good to see you, Todd. Yes, hi, good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. It's so interesting you're doing this. Why did you decide to do this? Well, I'm glad you find a lot of interest in it, just as everybody else has. Uh, why did we decide to do it? Because, quite honestly, it's literally the next step after the self-driving automobile. This is the next thing. So he was like, we're going we, we gonna to get ahead of the curve. And yes, this is the next step. Now, you mean to tell me you're going to break down the, the image, the beast, and the mark, and none of this technology 
comes up in your breakdown. What's up with that? Are you are you paid off? Or are you just saying, well, GMS said, I ain't finna agree with them niggas. Even uh, Alazar said, <laughs> y'all, y'all who are denying it, basically you got demons on you. You may not like GMS, but they're telling the truth about that. But most Jake will rather die with the lie, man. That's like a woman. A lot of people have talked about it, but nobody's actually done it. And we felt it was the right time to uh, go ahead with this new technology. How many workers have signed up for it? A little over 50. We have 80 at our office and 160 uh, total. Is it dangerous to the human body? I think scientists have warned about electrical waves from it. Yeah, there's really no electrical waves that are transmitted from it. Uh, That's a damn lie. And again, we showed you John the Revelator saw the grievous wound that uh, came from taking it. See? Radiation in your body. What, what do you think is going to cause, you know? <laughs> and the, the research is out there. The Apostle uh, Gabar brought it out. Uh, uh, it is FDA approved, and it was approved in 2004, so it sort of tells you how old but yet new the technology is. What can your workers do with this chip? Uh, we plan on uh, logging into our building through our card access, uh, using our micro markets uh, for payment types. We'll be logging into our computers, so any passwords needed to log into a computer from now on will all be gone. And we also plan on uh, using it to, uh, in the near future, start our vehicles with it and uh, uh, put the information on it regarding uh, medical stuff. What information is now on the chip? Just a serial number. But what could be put on the chip? Uh, it has 956 kilobytes of available memory on it. You could put anything from... Uh, your prescriptions that you're taking, your uh, testament to a living will, uh, any medical information, uh, business cards, uh, pretty much anything that you'd like, and it is all 100% encrypted. Quickly, can workers be tracked via this chip? That's a myth. No, they cannot. You mean to tell me the supervisor ain't going to have the ability to track you? Stop. They're going to know who's working, who's not working. They're going to know how long your break really was, where you at during your break. Stop it. You mean to tell me Esau is going to have this kind of technology and not use it to track? Stop. But, all right, this is published, and this came out February 12, 2023. This is now. And you mean to tell me John the Revelator didn't see this? OK. And as we see the elite pretty much um, hogging all of the uh, resources to themselves, we see inflation, we see farms being burned down, meat producing companies being burned down when it's all said and done. OK, the, the, the people won't have anything. And a system can be set up just like here in Brazil, where you get. You know, the economy gets so out of control, a collapse comes and you have what is called a UBI, which is a universal basic income. OK. Meaning this is the money you're going to get, you know, there's no jobs right now until we get things under control. You're going to get, you know, the, the, the universal basic income until we can provide jobs and get things under control. OK, but but in, 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 in Brazil, to get that. All right. You must drink a Capri Sun. Anybody who seriously thinks that the UBI programs of the future won't be full blown social credit systems need to look no further than Brazil, where newly selected socialist globalist Lula da Silva just decreed that the. Bolsa Familia program will require family members to be juiced in order to continue receiving benefits. 
Okay? <laughs> we can't play. It's a uh, uh, we can't play. It's a question of science. If I have if I have 10 Capri Suns to drink, I will drink all that is necessary. Okay? And it says here CB, central bank digital currencies will be the rails for these programs. So you can read up more on that. But this is just an example of where it can go. And we know as it gets deeper and as you know more craziness happens, okay, that haragma is going to come. John the Revelator saw it. Okay? Then we have this. Okay? WEF technocrats openly plot to observe and track human thoughts with implants. Okay? Mind control is the final frontier of the technocratic revolution. Okay? How they want to govern the world via science, technology, or whatever. What you say, do, buy, and sell is increasingly trackable through technology, yet so far the human mind remains a sanctuary free from prying uh, foreign eyes, the last refuge, and the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, you know, is the only ones, you know, the angels with that power to know what you're thinking. Esau wants that type of power via his technology. Okay? This will not last. You won't have privacy of thought if these people have their way. Can you imagine that in 10 years we are sitting here? And we all have an implant in our brains and I can immediately feel because you all will have implants. I can measure your brain waves and so forth. This is um actually what people are talking about. The WEF is interested in monitoring your thoughts. Imagine a world of total transparency. Could you imagine that every thought you had was put on a grid and someone could know what it is? <laughs> That's complete hell. I would rather go back to the spirit world. Okay? And that movie Implanted is is a good one to look at. Okay? And it's going to be presented as, you know, this 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 big help. Your thoughts are visible to everybody. Get the hell out of here. The coming age of wearable neurotechnology where our ear pods monitor the brave activity all day to track your health. Uh, if the they discuss if employers of insurance companies should have access to data about genetic predictions of people's future health. <sighs> Boy. Oh, and I remember this. I think I played this in another video. Likely the technology is actually further along than publicly acknowledged as the technocrats tend to roll out controversial advances all right, in criminal, in, incrementally to slowly acclimate the slaves to their new reality. Let's see here. Notice the apparent lack of hesitation on the part of Farahani Schwab or any of these technocrats to these novel technologies. Normal people who don't crave total control don't casually discuss monitoring every human brain activity. 24-7-365 with no acknowledgement of the obvious risk of abuse. <laughs> the only logical conclusion here is that there is something fundamentally broken in their psychological, spiritual makeup that allows them to decouple their normal human intuition from their work advancing the science. And this is because of what? They're here to do the bidding of Satan. Again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, against uh, a, a spiritual darkness in high places. Okay? But I thought Satan was kicked out of uh, heaven. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I thought Satan was kicked out of heaven. So what's that spiritual darkness in high places? Remember, the Most High controls both good and evil. Good through Yahweh Shai, evil through Satan. 
Those are the top two angels. And Satan has children and they're at work. And again, the scriptures told you. Let's get it. Always get it. I tried to we tried to tell y'all we we've been telling y'all. And then we get mocked for for going into to, to to articles and you know linking what's happening before us to prophecy. You know, Jake bring out 29 precepts to hide the fact that he ain't breaking down how you buy and sell with sin. Second Thessalonians two and eight, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the prophets and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, the chariots, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And if you can't look out into the earth and look at everything happening and see who the children of Satan are, then ultimately you you fall under this category with all the seemableness of, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, the most high shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Okay. And you really got Israelites out here. Okay. Pushing the notion that the, the, the chip has nothing to do with anything. And people with their hatred for us, no matter how crazy it sounds and how obvious it is that we're right or flocking to it. One second here. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicholas Thompson. I'm the CEO of The Atlantic, and I will be your moderator today. We are going to have an incredible session. Star of the show is Nita Farahani. She's a futurist and legal ethicist at Duke. And she's so smart and so interesting. You're going to learn a ton. This is how it's going to work. We're going to watch a short video. She's going to come on stage and talk. And then we're going to do a little Q&A. Questions from the audience. And that'll be a wrap. And you'll leave and let go. And you're feeling shut. To fight crime, be more productive, and find love. Let's roll. You're in the zone. Even you can't believe how productive you've been. Your memo is finished. Your inbox is under control and you're feeling sharper than you have in a decade. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favorite song. Sending chills up your spines, the music begins to play. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that appears whenever you're overloaded with pleasure. Your theta brainwave activity decreasing in the temporal regions of your brain. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. You can see your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. <laughs> but then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, which have earned you another performance bonus. You head home, jamming to the music, with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. When you arrive at work the next day, a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Along with emails, text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, 
They're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your co-worker and the people he has been working with. While you know you're innocent of any crime, you've been secretly working with him on a new startup venture. Shaking, you remove your earbuds. What do you think? Is it a future you're ready for? You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Artificial intelligence has enabled advances in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. Yeah, nigga, you crazy. <laughs> Out of your damn mind. Klaus Schwab, the WEF, the WHO, all unelected globalist bodies to which some extent you pay for through your hard-earned money. But the good news is the only thing they care about is your health, helping you to get through pandemics, to get through various crises. This isn't about surveillance, and at least there's no terrible dark plan to observe even your innermost thoughts. Oh! <laughs> Klaus Schwab at the WF openly discussed new technologies along with an agenda to observe and track human thoughts. You're not going to believe this, I don't believe this, but sadly it's true. Let's get into it. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here we have an implant in our uh, brains and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can and we measure your, your brain waves. Klaus Schwab, the old... So you can look this video up, <laughs> you know, I'm going to play this one as well. Is GMS right? Implant will be the future of healthcare, says Dubai radio host. We're talking about the future of healthcare, ladies and gentlemen, and how, let's say in about 30 years, everything you do when it does come to your doctor's appointment, to your checkups will totally change. And we're about to tell you why, because soon enough, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be implanting a microchip and you will have no more trips to the doctor by the year 2050. Now, we do know that so far our lives kind of resemble a science fiction film, <laughs> right? And by the year 2050, a microchip implant will carry out tasks we use our mobile phones for. And a Dubai conference has heard about that and they like the idea line. We're going to be telling you guys about everything you need to know about this microchip that let's say maybe in 30 years, all of us will have. Yes, indeed. And I think anyone who hates going to the doctor's office is going to love this invention. We do know that microchips are the way of the future. We've seen big tech giants, one of them being Elon Musk, basically pave the way for this with the brand new Neuralink. Mm. But we also have researchers, healthcare professionals who are basically also talking about implanting microchips mm -hmm. in our bodies. These will basically be the passport for your life. They're gonna record everything about your vitals, how your body is operating, your work, your health, everything you do. And if you've always hated to get a checkup, you know, your routine checkup at the doctor's office. But so let's be honest, Somnia. What? When's the last time anyone did a routine checkup? When's the last time you did one? Uh, I must say, I don't go for them often. Maybe routine blood tests, but not, no, not a buddy. I don't up. go to the doctor unless something hurts. <laughs> I think that's the reality with a lot of people. And, and, and even when it comes to the dentist, to the doctor, if it don't hurt me, <laughs> I don't go for it. You know what they say, what's not broken, don't fix it. Sometimes things are broken, we just don't realize that they are. Oh, that pain that I've been having in my left abdomen for the past four years now, it's okay. <laughs> when I can't move anymore, that's when I'll go to the doctor. This is exactly why researchers and scientists are actually looking into having body scanners in our own home. So basically, one day in 2050, you may just wake up and when you step into your shower, you'll also be having a full MRI taking place, recording all your vitals without you even feeling it. And all this information that will be scanned in your very own shower, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be sent to a medical care team who will use it to decide what vitamins you may need, what drugs you need to take for the day so that you can keep your body at 
top shape. Now we do know that a lot of the times actually people have a lot of vitamin deficiencies and they have no idea about it until their body just hits rock bottom. Yeah. One day they wake up, they have zero energy, very big telltale sign that you have really low vitamin D or a vitamin D deficiency. Maybe your blood pressure is struggling. Maybe your sugar levels are, are fluctuating in irregular ways and you just have no idea about it. So one day in 2050, we may just looking at having our bodies scanned on a daily basis in our very own showers. And I'm honestly very excited about that. Yes, and a lot of experts kind of do, you know, speculate that mobile phones will be no more mm. and that the majority of the tasks a phone is used for will be performed by the microchip, which will be embedded into our bodies. Now, obviously, you will still be able to view the news of the day, book appointments or anything else you want. but it will all be transported either neurologically or ocularly by the implant inside of you. Now that chip will also wake us up calmly then having to be woken up by the sound of the most hated <laughs> alarm sound ever. You know? Yeah, so watch that movie Implant It, you know. So this this, you know, this is what John the Revelator saw. That's the point of bringing this all out. All right, and you know, with us speaking against this all you know, we have to know and understand that there could be uh, situations popping up, you know, in the future where we'll we'll have to, you know, be beheaded. Okay, and what's the scripture say? I believe it's in the book of uh, Psalms. Psalms 116 and 15, precious in the sight of Yahweh is the death of his saints. So that's actually going to be a good thing. You know that, you know, ultimately the heavenly father is going to put the spirit on you when that time comes to take that death. All right. But really, it's, it's life. There's no such thing as death and understanding death is key. All right. Understanding, you know, the, the reward to come and, you know, and this is why. The scripture said in Revelation 14, you know, after it gave that strict and stern warning against what these devils are doing, you know, that Revelation 14 and 12, here's the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the most high and have the faith of Yahweh Shai in LT. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and they maintaining their faith in Yahweh Shai. So if you're obeying his command and maintaining your faith, that means unto death. OK, you're not going to, uh, uh, you know. You're not going to bow the knee. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die from the Lord from henceforth, yea except the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So if you of the elect and you have to be beheaded, hey, that blessing that your works are going to follow you. Okay, let's get this in the NLT, see how I, how I words it. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die from the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work. All right. For their good deeds, follow them. So the fact that you may have to be beheaded. All right. Keep that at the forefront of your mind. There is no way to lose if you're of the elect. And when you're getting ready to go through the process, man, the Lord is going to put the spirit on you. OK. And this very well could be Nero. And we know what Nero did. OK, he he, he pretty much burned down a portion in Rome where a temple that the Israelites were speaking against the, the followers of Yahweh Shai, we spoke against idols. So he burned it down and said they did it. That's where you get the, the, the term Roman candle. Okay. <laughs> and what did they do? Pretty much. Nero punished devout followers of Yahweh Shai who were called Christians by coating their strong bodies in pitch oil, wax, and other flammable materials before lighting their feet and using them as human candles. The Roman candles were used to light formal parties within the imperial gardens, whilst 
lit in such a way to prolong torture and pain. So you're you're at a party, you know, in his, you know, region, Nero, and there's just Jake burning. <laughs> so Yeah, Nero was off the chain and you know, this could very very well be him coming back, you know, and those harsh methods of uh punishment. Again, two horns like a lamb, the Democratic and Republic, the left, the right. But he's gonna eventually speak as a dragon. And what's to come of this 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 big mess that's being created here in twenty twenty three with all of these, you know, uh false flags and things we see happening what, what what's next hopefully i will edify it on to the next shalom